Hey everybody, and welcome back. Um, I know that airbrushes seem to be the thing that everybody wants to talk about in terms of miniatures painting these days. But the truth is that even if you get an airbrush and you get really good at it, you're still going to spend the majority of your time with brushes. And so with that in mind, I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about how to choose the right brush for the job and uh, what is the brush that you should choose in terms of brand. Uh, so, without further ado, why don't we go to the bench? So, when I got started painting, oh so many years ago, um, I grabbed whatever brushes were available at the local hobby shop. And for the most part, that works. Uh, it is certainly possible to apply paint to a model using uh, any of the hobby brand brushes that you can get. Nothing wrong with that and I did that for years myself and I'm, I'm sure many of you did too. But what really turned me around in terms of my thinking on brushes was uh, this would have been around 1985 the manager of the hobby store I was working for at the time suggested that I try a Winsor Newton Series 7 brush and uh, these brushes you know we kept in uh, in a glass case and th they were only able to be brought out uh, by an employee because they're expensive and I said well you know I don't really see the reason to do that and he said just try it take it home if you don't like it I'll buy it from you. And then with that in mind, I thought, well, there's no reason not to try it. And so I took the brush home and uh, turned out that I fell in love with it immediately. And it's interesting. And it's, it's one of those things you don't even think about uh, until you see the difference. And what I discovered was that with the hobby brushes, yes, they can get the job done. Um, but with a good brush, you can get the job done well. Uh, and what, is, what does that mean? Well, what you probably don't realize if you've never used uh, a, a good brush is that you spend a lot of time fighting your brush. Uh, whether that means that uh, there's stray hairs or it's not exactly doing what you want it to do, or it's already starting to get old and so um, it, it kind of bends funny and so it's not sp spreading the paint the way you'd like and all these things you are fighting against constantly and you don't even realize it. Uh, and, which is not to say that uh, there isn't a useful life for these brushes. There usually is. Usually when you get one brand new and you bring it home uh, it seems fine and I remember even after I had made the decision uh, that good brushes were a good thing I would still end up buying cheap brushes before buying a good brush because I felt like I couldn't afford it and the truth of the matter is it, it seems like um, even though a good brush you know, the first time you use it you'll realize that uh, there's a big difference. You still feel like, well, you know, with even with a cheap brush, I can get, you know, ten cheap brushes for the cost of uh, of a good brush. But that is not necessarily true. Uh, if you spend money on a good brush and you take care of it, you can get a really long, uh, useful life out of that brush. Uh, if you don't take care of it, well, you know, you're just throwing your money away. So, don't bother. But even with all that said, I still buy um, cheap brushes on occasion. For example, this is a uh, uh, Vallejo brush that I bought some months back, and as you can see, it's uh, it's 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 kind of done. But you know what? I still use this brush every day, and I use this brush for mixing paint and pulling paint out of paint pots to put into my palette and so it is still a useful tool even if it's not a useful paintbrush. Um, and that actually brings me to the subject of nylon brushes. If you're going to buy a cheap brush I actually think that the uh, the white nylon brushes or even the gold nylon like this Vallejo 
aren't a bad choice at all. Um, when they are brand new, you get a really nice tip. Well, this one's not brand new anymore, so it doesn't really have one. But uh, you get a really nice tip. I like the the feel of the bristles. They, they've got a little bit of a stiffness to them that I like. Spread the paint really nice. Uh, the biggest problem with the nylon brushes is that they don't stay new very very long. And what tends to happen is the especially these uh, the tips curl is usually the first thing that happens, and so. Uh, that makes them not good for detail work anymore. But it still makes them useful just fine for uh, for doing base coats and such. And, um, you know, if you want to keep your good brushes good for longer, uh, you don't have to always use them. You can sometimes do things like base coating with uh, a less expensive brush and then, you know, save your good brushes for when you have uh, something special you need to do or when you get when you go from base coat to more detail coats and you want to make sure that you've got uh, everything in control use your good brushes but the nylon brushes again as they get older I, I relegate them to different duties so brand new you can use them for just about anything uh, when the tips curl you can still use them for base coating and sometimes you can use that that tip curl for um, you know, getting into hard to reach places, it becomes like a specialty tool, which is kind of neat. Uh, and then once it goes beyond that, when you start getting the um, uh, the spread bristles, uh, well, then these make the best dry brushes ever. Uh, seriously, one of the reasons why I continue to buy uh, nylon brushes is because I don't know of a better dry brush, and whether that is uh, around you know, a small round brush for dry brushing in small places or a larger flat brush for doing bigger work like this one. Um, the nylon brushes, nothing beats it, honestly. Uh, I know that some of the companies, you know, like this is a P3 small dry brush, nowhere near as good as getting a cheap nylon brush. Um, and then, you know, again, and I continue to use this one to, to pull paint out of paint pots to apply it to uh, my uh, to my palette or for actually mixing paint um, you know and it continues to be a useful tool even though it's not really a paintbrush anymore um, now in terms of size I, I know that the common um, misconception that most people have and even some painters have when they first start and I know that this is what I used to think was that when you started painting uh, miniatures that you should always be using the smallest brush possible and this is I think this is an old Winsor Newton series 7 probably double O maybe triple O and it's lost a couple of hairs so it, it's it's just you know it's just tiny now and I think this is the assumption that you know everybody thinks that this is the size brush you should be using and the truth is the not that's not true at all um, my rule is I will use the largest brush that I can get away with uh, for every task. This is a uh, number four, uh, which I use quite a bit. There, look at the difference there. <laughs> uh, and this is a, uh, let me see, I've got a number three here and I got a number two. And I've got to say the threes and two, three, two, and one, uh, most commonly used brushes that I have. Um, I usually don't get anything smaller than a number one anymore. And the reason is uh, your, your rule for using a brush should be use the largest brush you can get away with with the finest tip. And uh, the reason you want to do that is because when you have a tiny, and you know, you've all experienced this, so I'm not telling you anything new, you put some paint on this brush and you go to work with it and it takes about three seconds before it's time to go back to the paint and get more paint and go back to the to the work area and if you're doing something really fine like you know you're trying to paint you're trying to paint eyes and you're lining up that shot and by the time you're like okay that's perfect and you try to dot the eye and all of a sudden you realize oh paints dry that happens all the time with the tiny brush now if you have a brush that's this size and 
you can get the tip to dot your eyes you don't no longer have to worry about the paint drying before you're ready to go because there is so much brush holding paint to back up that tip that it's just not going to dry out that quickly and so that is my recommendation in terms of uh, what you should be thinking uh, when you're using brushes don't buy the tiny brushes do not buy the tiny brush not only that these wear out so quickly um, that it doesn't really make a lot of sense and so uh, but that's another reason to choose a good quality brush over a hobby brush and that is because uh, these will hold their tips for a lot longer and they'll hold better tips they're, they're shaped better they work better and you're gonna get more out of it so you know a number three Windsor Newton Series 7 is going to beat out you know your detail brush from Citadel every day of the week so those are just some basic considerations to make I mean I I try different brushes all the time uh, I am certainly sold on the Windsor Newton Series 7 and I will continue to be sold on the Windsor, Windsor Newton Series 7s so other people like uh, Raphael 8404 and I've tried those and I think they're a good brush and I wish I had one here to share with you but I think the the one that I had most recently finally shuffled off its mortal coil so uh, it is no longer no longer around to share but I did try it until it was dead and I thought it was a fantastic brush but it's it was it felt different from the uh, uh, Windsor Newton's in that the bristles were a little bit stiffer uh, and not quite as soft and I didn't think it had quite as good a point but it could also just be that I am so used to this brush uh, brand that uh, anything else feels wrong so nothing wrong with that if you if you want to try that as your first brush give it a try but take a look at you know the brushes that you can get from art stores uh, this is a uh, Japanese calligraphy brush um, and, I, and I'm just picking this one up as an example of experimentation I found one of these once very inexpensively uh, at an art store with a standard bamboo I don't think this one's bamboo um, it might be actually uh, but they have a bamboo handle and usually have a little bit longer uh, brush and this one kind of sucks but I found one once that I just fell in love with and was using all the time and I have never been able to replace it again um, but I keep trying every time I go out and I see uh, calligraphy brushes I look and see if I can find one that has a nice uh, nice tip and a nice feel and nice size this one isn't it but again experiment see what you like um, try the good brushes they are worthwhile they are worth the money uh, and if you think you can't afford it save up for one and try it but don't get you know again don't buy the triple zero don't buy the zero buy a number one if you feel like you really want a small brush get the number one uh, I, I feel like it's the best compromise between having a small brush and uh, you know having a, a brush with a decent amount of, uh, of body behind it to hold paint uh, they actually have this series as well this is the miniature series and I accidentally ordered this one and it has and I, I think this is also a number one where's my other number one and the idea here is that it has shorter a shorter bristle length um, kind of interesting more of a specialty brush for getting into super fine areas while still having um, a, a reasonable amount of body behind it but don't recommend the miniature ones in general and that's gonna do it for now uh, try out good brushes they will help you will wonder how you ever got along without them and that's all for now and I will talk to you later